My name is Rhapsody and welcome back to Rogue Book. Off the top of the episode, there are a couple of things I don't like to say, and the first of those is that we are now on patch 1.4.9, uh, which reportedly fixes many of the issues uh, aforementioned in this series so far. I know not necessarily all of them, uh, but it's promising to see more of them being addressed. Uh, there are also some balance changes in there, specifically for giving Shara more multi-hit cards to support a more kind of glass cannon playstyle. Because her whole thing has been about the fact that she's got a trade-off of low HP, all of these positional tools, but giant damage. But the thing is, her giant damage was actually much smaller than most other characters. So the multi-hits give her more of a chance to utilize things such as power synergy. Uh, we are going to be taking her and Aurora out. So the two lowest HP characters, the two characters that are very, very reliant on having another character stand in front of them and defend them, Come along, then. we'll be taking both out at the same time. Uh, the second thing that I want to note is that yesterday I recorded a few episodes of Rogue Book. You'll never see them, because I recorded them all on mute, because I'm a dummy. But it does mean we have a little bit more progression than we had previously. Thankfully, we did not actually win an epilogue, so don't have to worry about that. But we did get a fair few upgrades here on this screen. Largely just increases uh, in rarity and uh, percentage chance that something should show up. We just effectively started upgrading from the cheapest thing we possibly could. Now... With these two characters, I am going to be picking Rising Fervor, Blood Tithe, and Thousand Eyes. So we will have Spending Gold deals five non-lethal damage to both characters. Thousand Eyes, Runes of Sight are three times more frequent, but the towers are removed from the map. And Rising Fervor, normal enemies gain one bonus power each turn. Because they're going to be gaining one bonus power each turn, we have a heavy incentive to try and kill them as quickly as we possibly can. So we are going to be looking into kind of doing... Uh, big bursty things, big turns, ideally. Let's get in there. Oh, that hurts. That hurts instantly. Our final boss is the Avatar of Greed, which increases the cost of our cards, which makes the big bursty turns a lot harder. The first time this hero takes damage each battle, draw a card and gain it energy. I'll put that on Shara, who is most likely to be in front more often. Uh, Red Diamond, when this blocks, deal twice that much damage to the leading enemy instead, as well as a Shadowed Gem. Let's have a look at what Nadim's selling. Some of this looks familiar. Yes, I have heard legends of these. We have Duel, attack a leading enemy for five twice. So this is one of the cards in the base set that has been changed, because previously that was Charge, attack the leading enemy for 12 or 13, 14, maybe? Something like that. Uh, but now it's attack the leading enemy for five twice and charge as well, so it will by default have you in position to be able to use your Sword of Destiny alongside it. There's also a Bravery and Coup de Gras, Retain Combo, attack for twice, or sorry, attack for damage twice, sorry, attack twice for damage equal to the size of your discard pile. We also have the Curious Biomancer, while this is in replay, uh, play, retain your hand and store energy between turns. Very, 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 very good. Like, this could probably cost two. Probably not three, because it would need to have an immediate impact to really justify its cost at three, but this could probably cost two. Uh, there's also Liquify and there's Glow Worms in here too. Himself's Quill, whenever you consume an ink, reveal one extra adjacent tile at random. Getting that as early as I possibly can seems like a good idea. Another couple good ideas here. Primal Skulls, this card costs four more and gains eight. I believe that one of the uh, one of the developers has said that this is going to be uh, removed in the next patch to be reworked. I am not surprised. <laughs> it makes so many draw cards very dangerous because if you can ever get this off, then suddenly, uh oh, we've seen. You know, I think I had the primal skull in maybe two of the infinites I've done so far. One thing we should also quickly check here is... What do we have in the base deck? We have Wit Strike. Draw a card, attack for four times your hand size. Something I found out recently is four times your hand size does include individually 
each dagger, each sip, each headbang. Uh, I don't think Sifa has a stacking thing like that, but it does count those individually. Uh, which means that you can actually end up with a pretty giant wit strike with daggers and sips. So we've only got one replacement for Aurora. We've got three replacements for Shara. Attack for three, gain block equal to the damage dealt. I don't think this and the red diamond anymore is just an infinite instant win. When this blocks, deal twice as much damage to the leading enemy instead. And then this says, uh, gain block equal to the damage dealt, right? I, I think those now happen in individual steps rather than uh, you can just add those two together and then it attacks for three, which gives you three block, which gives you six damage, which gives you six block, which gives you 12 damage, which gives you 12 block, which gives you 24, you know, so on and so forth. Uh, dagger cage combo. Gain two block plus two additional block for each dagger in your hand. Strike, lunge, and lacerate. At the very end there, uh, attack for three, bleed one. I don't think I'm going to be taking any of these just yet. Uh, him sales probably comes with me pretty soon. Curious Biometer probably comes with it, uh, us eventually. But I don't really have a hard direction yet. Let's just go to a normal battle. That shop doesn't really give me like a great idea. My starting relics, my starting relic rather, didn't give me a great idea of wh where I want to go. My starting inks. Don't usually give you an idea of that, so that makes sense. And I'll just I'll just murder the back line instantly. That'll do. Somehow I think that'll be okay for us. So something that we are quite likely to end up doing a lot of times over the course of this. Gain block equal to the damage dealt, but because we didn't deal any damage, we didn't gain block, which means we didn't move forward. Perfect. So this is something we're going to do relatively consistently here. And that's happily take a bunch of damage on Aurora. Because she can hold a, a whole load of damage in. And then suddenly at some point can no longer do that. We hope to never hit that such uh, that, that sudden point of no longer being able to do that. Uh, heals all the way back up to 24 there. Mm. Owls down here. Boots of Alani. At the start of each battle, draw two cards. One of my faves. Actually, we can get three up in that direction. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm going to go buy him sales now. Find an extra tile at random. Because then this is just going three up in this direction. Yeah. It's a pretty good one right there. 14 is is quite good. You usually don't find 14 full spaces with it. Mm. So that's three incoming damage and vulnerability. I mean, Shara's going to be in the front later. So yeah, we will... We'll put that vulnerability on the uh, on the whole right target for it. Hmm. That'll be enough. Yeah, that's Thanks. damage. Ooh, that's damage right there. Attack for five, gain block equal to the damage dealt. But I actually do. Oh, but the damage dealt can't even be higher than that right now. Okay. Gain our block. Uh. So the lunge is 12. So yeah, no matter what I do, it's going to take two individual hits. To remove a target from the board, that is. Ouch. We take four damage and vulnerability on perhaps not the best target. Okay, wit strike's good though in that it instantly kills an enemy. And I think that's good. Um... Strike. Quicken. Oh, no, I should have struck and then quickened afterwards. Would have still held the quicken for a later turn. 
could end up being important. Uh, it won't end up being important, to be clear, but it could have. Nice. Time for some tea. We're nine HP down on uh, Shara at the moment. Not that. Ooh, baby. Actually, quite good. It's Lani. Get a radiant heart. Uh, do I start opening Vaults of Wisdom yet? It's hard to tell when I'm going to start opening them here. Hmm. Oh, after we go to the Alchemist. That's the answer to that question, buds. Uh, a three getting us there is the most efficient that I can see currently. Hey, hey, hey. What's over there? Another rune of sight, evidently. So this purchase is going to cost us HP. Uh, who do I want to find more stuff for right now? Honestly? Like, Shara? Uh, but Aurora gets more defensive kit. I do need her to have more defensive kit. Could also give me some direction. All right, I'll transform that strike. Hmm. Kappa T Master. Whenever Aurora takes damage, add a sip to your hand. Do I want that? And if I put deal five damage to this hero, they gain a power in that. Will it trigger? I have to do the science. Very well. I simply have to. So we've got some sips. Some slight sips synergy. Speaking of slight slips, slight sips synergy. None is available to us here. Uh, try saying that ten times fast. Uh, we got liquefy in the base deck. No, we don't. We have liquefy in the stir. Uh, enchant weapon would be good. Ish. Humbling vision? Oops. Defense? Actually, I think I just take the humbling vision right there. And then... I'll save the radiant heart for really tough positions. Oh, God. This feels like after this fight is going to be a really tough position. I know all I could really do there. Oh, yeah. that's kind of what I expected. All right. Hey, it does work. That's so cool. Uh, I do ultimately want Aurora back in front, I feel here though. All right, heal up four, you go to 13, defend, go to the front, eight, 13, you will take damage this turn. Uh, so we are going to need to heal you, which means we don't use sips until after that. Or maybe we just hold the sip. Yeah, I'm going to wit strike defend. So I know we've used the uh, teapot already in this fight, but we'll have an upcoming fight that we can use it in the game. It'll be okay. Also, we get more sips. Oof. Oof, that's damage. Good thing we have a humbling vision to humble them with. Um, okay, we'll quicken. In order to get a blade barrier out for seven there. Oh god, again? Uh, we are now in I need to kill this enemy position. Um, 
You can do that, right? I mean, I don't have too many ways to defend here anyway, so... You'll lacerate. It's, oh god, Sips isn't gonna do anything. It doesn't do damage right now. Oh god. Uh... Okay. What can I do? Block equal to the damage dealt. So, two, four, six. Two, four, six is six, six is 12. 12 on top of eight is 20. So, I'd have to play all three sips this turn. That'd be sip, dagger cage, sip, blade barrier, sip, defend. And then leave a roar on one. Sip. Dagger Cage, Sip, Blade Barrier, Sip, Quicken, then Defend, otherwise I don't get the damage. Quicken, Defend, from the Strike in the back. So we didn't have the ability to take out the enemy that turn, but we've, again, put Aurora in the same position of, we'll fix you later, I hope. Well, now it's a good time to bank a bunch of purchases because we're on such low HP. It can only deal non-lethal damage to us. So if there was ever a time for capitalism, it would be right now in this game specifically. Do I want a... I do want so many of those things, but I can't afford any of them. It's time for Vaults of Wisdom, I think. Phantasmal Might, Concentrate, and Foresight are available here. Foresight is a very, very dense block card, and it's exactly the kind of thing we need, though, is the problem there. I don't want it to be exactly the kind of thing we need, though, but it is exactly the kind of thing we need, though, isn't it? Concentrate could eventually burn basically every bad card out of the deck at this point. When this block deals twice as much damage to the leading enemy instead, that dealing 24 damage is actually pretty un uh, uh, unexciting. <sighs> Concentrate with two slots in it. Phantasmal Might is also here. When you draw or play this, the other hero gains two power until the end of turn. We'll take Concentrate because of the Curious Biomancer. Which means we definitely need to get that Curious Biomancer. They dance fate weave. We take fate weave. I'm now looking for anything that puts a card back atop my deck. Then I'm using the curious biomancer as well as fate weave to constantly put that back atop the deck, draw it back out, put that back atop the deck, draw it back out. I don't need another concentrate, do I? Maybe I just need another concentrated damage in a tidal force here. Tidal force isn't bad. Packs for 15 for one a lot of the time. Obviously not in the next fight. Honestly? This is a weird one. But Concentrate is very, very good in the Avatar of Greed fight at the end. If I can live right now holding two Concentrates... It's probably going to be really good in the end game, but do I get to the end game if I take a second concentrate here? My my damage is so bad. Uh, I, I don't. I don't live if I do that. All right. Oh, sagacity. Oh, yes. Uh, Shara starts each battle with three cards, so an extra energy on the first three turns. Expert looter. At the end of each battle, gain one gold for every two cards in your deck. Oh my god, I want that. 28 extra gold per battle at the very start. There's also Sagacity here. Uh, start each battle with three sips in hand. God, I'm actually going to take Expert Looter. It's so it's so much extra money over the course of the run. Come on. Uh, we'll pop a Radiant Heart now because I am actually quite threatened. I'm going to go into a battle. Oof. Uh, okay, this could be bad, but as long as we're... As long as we keep our heads about us, we should be okay, yeah?
I will lacerate on turn one. Then I'm going to quicken and fate weave. Oh. Uh, yes, blade barrier back to the top of the deck because I did get concentrate. Okay, backliner is already dead. They don't know it yet, but they are. Sure, I'll cap a team master. Hmm. I'll even heal. Wait, no, I already used that. Hopefully, I can get the kill this turn, though. Uh, yep, that'll do it. Title, Lonzo. Imperial Ink, four in two different directions. Oh my god, we can actually use that for full value here. Gets us all the way up to that normal battle, also gets us closer, not close, but closer to the Yogata. Okay, do I... No, I just need battles. Oh man. I need a lot of defense. Defend my way to the front line with you. Dagger cage my way back to the front line as well. Quicken my way back to the back line. Mm hmm. Hit a blade barrier. I guess a lunch. And concentrate a strike out of hand. Sure. It feels like I'm. God. It feels like I, I may. Uh, perish? Okay, you take that heal. So that then I can hit you with a wit strike after breaking that. That's right, works out really well here. Also gonna use Fate Weave to put the Humbling Vision back atop the deck, because that seems like it'll be good. Good and useful this next turn. Yeah, removing 13 damage. Seems like it's good and useful enough. You go back to the front, and then you go back to the front, and then you use Tidal Force. And... We'll pass. Get access to even more sips. Nice. Oh, God. The enemy's damage is so high. Um, 28 incoming damage. I can't block the 10 right now. I can block for 5. That's a wit strike and hope I draw something. Unless I blade barrier first. So blade barrier, sip wit strike. Wit strike removes so much damage doing that. Anyway. Okay, we did get a defend. So now I can blade strike. Moving myself to the front position. Gives us the ability to use a single sips. Then if I concentrate. On a lacerate. I give myself the ability to play sips. Does two damage to the enemy. I can title force them from the back line. And then defend the front line. Incoming damage is 28 against 35 combined. That's basically the last turn I can solve, though. So we need to... Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Hmm. 
humbling vision into... Oh, God. Dagger cage into sip. Into... Wiccan lunge sit defend the very end oh man we definitely don't have any more turns we can survive in this fight because we're too busy winning <laughs> oh, get him oh rough uh life's hard life's hard excuse me we just got six gold? Wait. One gold for every two cards, not two gold for every one cards. Oops. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll find that one under MB for my bad. Let's take a look. Let's absolutely take a look. What's oh, okay, not anything particularly grand. Uh Ogoto, whenever the hero plays a card that costs two or more deal five damage to all enemies, having some pseudo AoE in the deck is nice, but honestly what I just want to do with the starter fragment right now is just get 19 spaces. Ooh, okay. Curious Bymancer isn't going to save us right now, so. What will? What's over there? Hmm. Why? Is eight good enough? Honestly, probably. Powerful rune of sight is available though. Unfortunately, it's also in a pretty rough position for everything else. Um, if I stood here, I could use a brush and still access above. It's just a little closer to the south, but I don't know if we're going all the way down there. It's more useful than popping it in any other area though. All right, super rune of sight. Well, I mean, look, if if that's going to happen, then yeah, maybe it does. Maybe it does end up getting us all the way down to the bottom. What's over there? This is being one hell of a chain. Thank you. Radiant Heart, desperately necessary right now. I'll take a full heal if you've got one. A divine effigy is kneeling before the heroes. Despite its immobility, it looks very much alive. Its soft voice rings out to the adventurers. It has been ages since my eyes have lain upon such a spark of life. Tell me, strangers, what is it you want of me? Your wish shall become my duty. Be my sword. Uh, add a simulacrum of warfare to the deck, an ally that is aggressive deals 12 damage every single turn. Be my shield! Gain block equal to the ally spirit at the start of each turn. Six block at the start of each turn. Love that. Be my shadow. Whenever you play a zero cost card, deal damage equal to this ally's spirit to the leading enemy. I would love to be able to do that, but the, uh, the greed means we're not going to be doing that. I do not require your assistance. We'll take the shielding. We need, uh, yeah. So it shall be done. We need that shielding. Where are, where are normal battles? Is there any other normal battle other than that one at the very bottom now? There do not appear to be so. Hmm. Well, that's really rough, because my inks don't actually help me get to the places I now need to be, so... um. Oh, actually, no, this does. It's fine. We can use the three north from a position here and still get our way up. Honestly, it's still going to be Aurora more likely to play two costs out of them. Yes, that's a hard one to get, though. Probably wait for the brush from the elite fight. Which means we need to take the elite fight, which means, uh... 
You know? That's what it means. God. Gosh and heck and all dang. I think I just need to take the Radiant oh, Heart and go in with as much HP as I have. Huh? Glass cannons! Glass cannons! Wait, is that always in the opening hand? Because that's kind of wild if it's always in the opening hand. Attack value. Dagger cage. Uh, we will be quickening at the very end of this turn. And look a lot like that. So I get six bleed on Aurora, which does hurt. Definitely hurts. Hmm. It does mean I probably have to full heal this turn. I mean, I could use a single sip first, but I do have Tidal Force in hand. Hmm. Should probably Fate Weave first, though. Get a better idea of what's going on in this hand. Hmm. I'll tell you, the problem at the moment is that Blade Barrier doesn't move me forward. So currently Aurora is looking at standing in the front line. For this. Which I hope I need not tell you is not ideal. We can do the 18 to you and then move forward with Blade Barrier. God, that. It's the best I can do. This is the best I can do. Not good. Not good at all. <sighs> Thank heck these sips deal six damage to us, but give us a sip. Alright, let's lacerate you, pop out a sip, strike you, pop out a sip, because it lets us then tidal force you. I mean, I could pop out one final sip if I desperately wanted to right now, but I don't. Instead, we'll save those sips for you. Hmm. I mean, Aurora absolutely has to take this effect. Otherwise, we pretty much already just, like, lose. Uh, so... We just want as much damage as can be dealt here in the front line, and then we you know, bounce out. Let's use a humbling vision. No damage dealt. And yet your attack will still manage to connect. Huh? You dealt one damage? This might set. Oh, maybe the vulnerable. No, but there wasn't. No. No. It, it just. I guess it halves one to one. Uh. That'd be Wit Strike Dagger Cage. Yeah. Or. Wait a second. Dagger Cage. Sip. I'm gonna Fate Weaver and see if I can get. Okay, I did get Concentrate, good. We'll concentrate on Defend. And then Sip two times. 
There's no reason to leave the fight without playing as many of those as I possibly can. Okay, we did survive the elite fight. Great. Uh, I hope I get very powerful from it, because if we don't, then we're not surviving the boss fight. Gabriel Compass, Runes of Sight always reveal gemstone if there's one left on the chapter. Okay, well... The thing about that is we're... Uh, I found, like, no hearts as well. Thank you. <laughs> Truly. Uh, we have to risk this normal fight. We just have to do it without the heart, because afterwards we're going to need to go around and buy everything in the game that we can. Because uh, it can only deal non-lethal damage to us. And then after that, we pop the heart. This is like one of the worst fights it could have been. At least, okay, so it does look like the simulacrum is specifically in our opening hand. Good. Do you like that? Uh, it's Fate Weave. Blade Barrier. I don't know if that's going to help us much. Let's put that dagger cage. We have to humble your vision. All right. That rebel slinger in the back line is just, just waiting, just waiting. And they're all getting more powerful every turn as well. Ah, ah. I'm worried. Um, okay, let's focus on the video game and not the creeping sense of dread. <laughs> Definitely want to get a title force out there. Unfortunately, I have to hit basically healthy characters. Ten from that. that could be enough. Even with the quicken. Quicken into defend. Defend. That backliner wakes up in one more turn. <sighs> Gonna be rough. Okay. What can we do? Uh, we could tidal force and then defend. Oh, that did five damage AoE because of the, the Ogato and we have. Okay. Dang, should have used that later. Uh, let's put the... I was going to put the Wit Strike back atop the deck, but now that I've drawn Concentrate... Wait a second, though. If I have to drop a card here and then burn a card with Concentrate, Wit Strike is doing very little now. Three cards less, so it's 12 damage less. That's still good. Has to be a damage card. We we have to pivot to damage right now. <laughs> Otherwise, we're just not going to be able to kill the backliner in time at all. Yeah, it's intentional that I took that two damage. <sighs> Aurora's gonna have to survive absolutely as much as she possibly can here. Dagger Cage is in the draw. We're not even gonna draw to it, so it doesn't matter.
you have 20 HP. We have just short of uh, lethal on you because of that. Pretty much every way, right? If we quicken, we get ourselves out of the front line so we wouldn't have lethal anymore. If we could defend Aurora to the front line and then quicken back, that'd be really good. We'd take out the Rebel Slinger. I can take out the Rebel Slinger using all three of my attacks this turn. It's just the right thing to do. I'll put the debuff on Aurora as well here. Mayhaps that was not an excellent idea. Sometimes they aren't. Sometimes they aren't. Uh, okay, concentrate on Quicken, dropping that. Getting extra energy to make sips easier to cast. So that we can lower the cost of things from then on out. Defend, defend. 14 incoming. We halve your attack value. Two incoming. Probably Lunge. Lunge sips Tidal Force. Lunge sip Tidal Force. And then Blade Barrier is enough to... Well, not kill, but... Keep us safe. When I say safe, 1 HP counts as safe here. In a fight where I was certain I was going to lose a character, 1 HP does count as safe. <laughs> I haven't found any power like this entire floor. Um, I'm absolutely destitute. Okay, take a wee bit of gold. Let's do all of our purchasing now. Equilibrium. Or Windfall. Got a lot of energy gain and a lot of low-cost cards right now. Not much draw. I don't know if Windfall wants to go in. Equilibrium easily could... It's a really good block card in the instance where stuff is rough for us. You know what? Maybe this is the deck where Equilibrium really proves itself to me. Maybe this is where I'm really impressed by it. Tab Pals. Summon four frogs. If you control an ally other than frogs, this costs zero. I mean, this costs zero. That overrides, like this is not reduced in cost by one. It overrides what the Avatar of Greed would do. Um, I mean, frogs are nice, but are four frogs nice? Is four frogs anything? Climax is damage. And I am missing damage. Perfect. I mean, I'm missing everything. Let's be clear. We're missing damage. We're missing defense. Oh, my God. 
Oh, Dragon Spirit and Toad's Explosion and Wit Strike. Uh, you can't turn down Dragon Spirit when you see Dragon Spirit. It's too good. At the end of each battle, both heroes heal three. Very good. Whenever you use Aurora's Teapot, heal the other hero for half the amount. Oh my god, even better. When Shara takes damage from an enemy attack, she retreats and gains four power next turn. T for two. Definitely take the Curious Biomancer. sir. Bravery is more defense, and it also makes a lot more sense now that we have Retain. That'll have to be it. There's no way I already used the heart, right? No. Okay, cool. <laughs> Let's patch up. This still isn't that much HP to be going in with. Oh. I do get one ink at the start of the next law, but I also have 84. This... This challenge that does five damage to each character anytime you purchase anything, being done with the characters with both of the lowest max HP, may not have been my cleverest decision of all time. However, Shara and Aurora is the final combination that we are yet to do. So it's some mama tempting. Give them a little bit of a go. All right, we're dead. <laughs> Kidding. Uh, let's see what we can do. God, are we actually dead? Oh, that would be hilarious. We're not. We are damned close. So they're going to be leading, uh, taking the power from the leading enemy. They've got 280 health as well. I don't know how to get all that HP down. Oh. Let's concentrate on Dagger Cage and get rid of it. It's not good. Thankfully, Equilibrium is actually going to give us good block and damage this turn. It's very good. Uh, I don't want to get back in the front line afterwards. I think I'm going to use Lacerate. Then Equilibrium. Should have quickened before the Equilibrium. That's my bad. Get him, Kappa T Master. Bravery our way to the front line. Defend our way back to the front line. And strike from the back line. I'm intentionally taking damage this turn to get more damage on Aurora so that the T for two heals more. Seems like the most damage I can really afford to take. That was needed. Yeah, yeah, wasn't it just? Wasn't it just? Okay. It's fate weave. So Simulacrum of Resistance does not need to be in an earlier hand, as it turns out. I could put a sip back atop the deck if I really wanted to right now. Defend, then Blade Barrier. Don't like that I'm losing a power on the character that desperately needs to hold on to it, but here we are. Okay, it's good to have Wit Strike at least. Wit Strike is so much damage. 31, and then it does the 5 AoE as well. Very good for us right now. Bait wave. I think I do want to use Climax to end this turn. So what does that mean I'm dropping, right? Well, I'm not dropping. I'm putting back atop the deck. 
So this turn currently looks like the next cast is concentrate to destroy something. Uh, you are ultimately going to be dealing 14 damage total because we're going to use Humbling Vision. We'll also use a single defend, which means that I can definitely drop another defend. Doesn't tell me what to burn, though. Am I even playing Sips this turn? Maybe I'm not playing Sips this turn. It doesn't matter. No, I need to get as much damage out as possible, basically, whenever it's possible. So this was all done not greatly, because I should have struck from the front line. Okay, another dragon spirit. I'll lacerate as well. Defend, quicken, then blade barrier. So you'll deal six, 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 18. Sure. Defend, quicken, blade barrier. I'm gonna throw the sips as well. Is Wit Strike in the draw pile? No, it's not. Eh, I can use the sips on a later turn, I think. Um. Did I? Did I awfully miscount that right there? I thought it was 24 incoming damage, and I'd blocked for 18, and I had 9 health. 9, 18, 27. Incoming damage of 24. I, I I think I missed something there. Oops. I guess. This is the, 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 the long and short of it right now. One, uh, one, whoops, on my part. Sorry about that. This will not be the end. Steal yourself. That's Thankfully, we do kill him, and all the wounds are going to get removed by having finished the fight. Whew. Oh, at the start of each battle, add four columns. Ready on deck. Wait a second. That's... Oh, Avatar of Greed really, really doesn't like when you, when you have fun, does it? Honestly, it just wants me to play the other characters, really. Like, this mod and this boss both want me to be playing the other character. Uh, while this hero is leading, their attacks inflict one bleed. Honestly, like, we do need some consistent scaling damage of some kind. We actually may just need the Claws of the Predator. I'm not great at utilizing it yet, but I may actually just need it. Nice find. When you play this, add a copy to your hand with no gems, the Mirror Moonstone. Could get another Concentrate, could get a second bar. Oh! Could get a second Simulacrum of Resistance. That's actually damned appealing. 12 free block a turn. Mm. Good to see the ink there. There's also, uh, whenever you end your turn with no uh, no cards in hand, the leading hero gains a courage. There's also a bloodstone over the left, which would be quite nice too. Natum is selling a kickflip climax and lightning draw. Don't think we're going to have time to really pay off that kobold fetish. There is a seer here. Three different times, it will draw three cards, then put a card from your hand on top of your deck. There's also a Kappa study for drawing three cards. Hmm. Okay. 
Is there much defense at all in here? No, none. Okay. Um, here, a single brush, although it's you know underutilized with only seven spaces, gets us to a normal battle as well as another normal battle, so it gets us a lot of value. 20 cards, 22 cards is our next pickup. This works. All right, give me the Triton. These are not the Tritons I was looking for. Uh, yet. See, this is the problem we're contending against. The incoming damage here is 21, it's 31. Um, almost no thing I can do can uh, generate that much. So... And also nothing in hand does any generation of defense really at the moment. Uh, I guess bravery does now. So the incoming damage is um, 31, I said. Which is actually exactly enough for Aurora to die, even if I use bravery. And then get Aurora to the front afterwards. Oh, oh dear. Our best defense right now may actually just be a wild offense. I think we might have to just hit those bad boys in their weak spot for maximum damage. I'm quick into the front line. Using a title here for full value. Then I will bravery my way back to the front line. And you know what? I should probably just knock out 22 damage against the enemy right now. Although equilibrium does seem nice. How? Yeah, that makes sense too. Uh, on fire, the hero in this position will take 10 damage. Whenever I swap, I reduce the fire stacks on me by two. I have absolutely no ways of swapping this turn. Um... This is the glass cannon combo. Just, just, in, just, you know, just, just, just apropos of nothing. Uh, I feel the need to re-mention that. Like, all of our defense is currently in this. The simulacrum. Like, we actually... We can't... We cannot match these numbers. We had... How many, like, real defensive cards have I turned down? One? It feels like when you're playing glass cannons and you're trying to do especially like, you know, difficulty plus plus plus, uh, it feels like you kind of need something really broken to start off with here. Um, I feel like I can kill the enemy frontliner and all that jazz, but I am gonna lose Shara. <laughs> Uh, I just shouldn't move backwards. Yeah, I just shouldn't have moved backwards there. That was my bad. Thank you. 
Yeah, I should have left Aurora out front and then taken more damage on there. And then used the T for two to heal the other back up as well. Well done. Hmm. It's a, that, that's, that's a tilt mistake right there. That's absolutely a tilt mistake. This is, these are damage. I like this one. Although I will say it is a tilt mistake born of uh, <laughs> an almost certainty that I am dead already. Uh, how do I... Um, so I'm going to need to find a bunch of cards to try and find any defense at all. Working up to a bloodstone would be nice. There's normal battles up in that direction. All right. I'll noble ink out here. Didn't really care about that being connected, but okay. Um, move even further out. I mean, thank you, Gabriel Compass, for finding something pretty good. Uh, sure, we'll take the Alchemist, looking for some giant defensive tool. Those only really exist within Aurora out of these two characters. Stop quicken for it. Hmm. 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 Suitable. I get to feel the bot drawing more cards. I'm, I'm still just going to be looking for ways to try and bail myself out now because I I still feel uh, not just threatened, but dead. <laughs> I feel like uh, two dead... Two dead folk walk in here. Repulse. Let me show you my move. The talent tier has been unlocked. Start each battle with four daggers. I love the idea of having sagacity in the four daggers, but it's just not... It's not possible for us. Vaults of Wisdom can be visited twice. I need that so I can go back to them. Wait a second. All right, you can't revisit them. It's like, it's like his new Vaults of Wisdom will be visited twice. Okay, there's another event as well. Another revelation of a gemstone. Very far Let's from us. All right, we go Bloodstone on you. We're going to take two Radiant Hearts before we next try a battle. We're going to go to a Vault of Wisdom. Uh, if Shara has Courage, she gains 10 blocks. She can get Courage, theoretically. Wit Strike makes a lot of sense. It's like actually really good damage for us when we have Curio uh, Curious Biomancer out on the field, which is kind of our boss kill strat. Is it a frog? Toad suit! Summon five frogs! Then, gain five block. Block is equal to the number of frogs you have. Um, I mean, yeah, it's, 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 it's block, but it is only block from frogs. Alright, narrative. Hmm. The blessing is the boon of the marginata. We can get full healing, we can get longer life, 10 max HP, we can get her blessing, uh, gain 2 power and heal for 5 at the end of each battle if the hero dies, the blessing fla uh, fades. I, I think I have to take that and then just really, 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 really hard focus, trying to make sure that I can keep everyone alive. Oh my god. Uh... It's time to use the heals, I think. Refreshing. And then I'll try and take as much damage on Aurora as I can next fight and then heal back up Shara using Teeth Time. Okay. I'm holding on to gems right now, I should use those. Uh, repulse. Let's 
sets us up to be able to play at least one si uh, simulacrum. Uh, I'm not really able to hit that backliner uh, much at all. So I gained my two spirit. Because that's like 48 incoming. Yeah, I'm so screwed. <laughs> yeah. There you go. It's 30 incoming damage now. Hold it! Okay, yeah, that's... Oh, God. I mean, let's start with the fill the pot. Well, no, let's start with the fate weave. We did get concentrate. Interesting. I'm going to drop the Kappa T Master. Should have a plan to kill someone this turn. Liquefy and Equilibrium does it. I'm gonna concentrate away the Curious Biomancer. I don't want to do that, but this fight ends very quickly, one way or the other. I'd like it to be in my favor, but. Well, I can see the signs ahead of me. I'm not playing excellently right now. There is definitely part of me that is uh, assessing inevitability as extant I'll here. I'll give this my absolute best to end with here. I mean, let's see if it does end. Alright, Fate Wave. It's a lot of Shara cards. This will not be the end. We get Climax. We will actually manage to leave this fight. I mean, we immediately lost the boon in the Marginata. We have no defense and no real damage. No real strategy. <laughs> And no real meta resources. Um, we're in one of those weird positions that I, I, I occasionally run into in games where I, I don't know if it's right to try and keep the run alive. Let me study, I guess. Show you my moves. Still no real defense. Skip, I guess. Like, you always want to try as hard as you possibly can, and you know, resilience is what roguelikes teach you, etc., so on and so forth. But sometimes it does feel like uh you're you've got how many wounds? Four wounds in a deck of 28 cards. And how many of them defend us? This one, but only a turn later? This one? Insignificant amount, insignificant amount. Sometimes. <laughs> like, you, like... Sometimes it feels like uh, forestalling inevitability is a task in self-frustration. I'm gonna reveal this face. I'm gonna try. Because I'll feel bad if I don't, frankly. I'll take that repulse. I guess I'm going to try and get Rain of Fish to somehow get us across the line. Aurora has 7 max HP. 
What if you want to get killed with no? Both heroes have power. Chill up. Aurora, you have more max HP now. Honestly, a pretty dang good hand to open with here. Like making me feel a bit bad about you know, the, the previous outlook on our prospects. Mm-hmm. Because we have cards like this that are not just the 27 block. was needed. Oh, Harvey, your attack value. I guess I have to throw the defend because those wounds are going to stay in hand too. Second so concentrate really wouldn't have gone straight here. Impulse. Like, it kind of is the best defense that I can do, but I still shouldn't move her back to the front. And that's the only card I could play, so now I'm locked out of playing any other cards. At least we do have these giant wit strikes. It's one thing we've still got. Let's lacerate and climax. Oh, just casual 44 power on the recon over there. Alright, we made it through that fight. Oh, I forgot to use all the sips at the end there. That's my bad. Okay. Yes. Now we have access to... Couple different ways to get a little bit more powerful. <sighs> Adding a card draw into concentrate this makes a works. whole bunch of sense. A a card that wants an extra spirit. In fact, I don't think we have any that can take an extra spirit. A card that wants to not block, but deal extra damage to a leading enemy. Honestly, I'm gonna put that in Blade Barrier and just see if this is still, well. this still works. I don't think it does. And the other two don't get put in anything. That's just not gonna happen. Discarding a card at random is, it's, it's just, it, 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 especially like, cause you don't wanna play it at the start. You do wanna do it theoretically, possibly at the, you know what? Here's, here's what it theoretically could go into. Climax. But it can't go into Climax because it still discards a card at the end of my turn and I have Curious Biomancer, which is retaining other cards. So... I, I'm putting it in there anyway. Fine. I'll, I'll actually works. socket that gem in something. Let's see both simulacrums in the opening hand here. Well, oh, but I'm not only going to be able to play one of them. So if I play both, I take 18 damage. Well licked. Excuse me? I didn't gain any block. Why did I move to the front? Hmm. So the attempt to gain block still does it. I 
Right, concentrate, drop a wound, draw a card. That's a very good card. Hopefully we draw into a repulse. Hopefully we draw into a repulse. That's not a repulse. The incoming damage this turn, no matter which way we slice it, is 48. Because if we kill the backliner, then the frontliner is just dealing the extra 10. Unless we get the backliner somehow to die to bleed? Could I theoretically even do... I definitely don't have the damage for that. Wait, do I? Wait. No, I'd, I'd have to be in the front line to get the second... So wait. 8 takes you down to 24. 20 takes you down to 4. And then you've only got two bleed on you? Yeah, so we can't do it. That was needed. Yeah, yeah, it was. Because otherwise we are already dead. I can't cast Bravery or Climax this turn. Otherwise, again... Well, I mean, no, we're already even dead on Aurora if we let Aurora stay in front, so... Oh, dear. Oh, dearie, dearie me. Wait a second. Oh, okay, so the bleed did trigger before they attacked, so never mind. It didn't matter how I did that. That was not gonna... Not gonna work out for us. All right, more curses. <laughs> Good thing we have humbling vision in this hand. Oh, the Kappa Team Master deals damage under that? Wait, but... Wait. Deal five damage to this hero. Damage in this game usually goes against block. Remove 5 HP from this hero or lose 5 HP on this hero or some other version like that would, would actually make that pass correctly. Uh, repulse, I guess. I feel like I gave into inevitability a long time ago. <laughs> and my body's just catching back up to it. Steal yourself. That said it was gonna do 26 damage. Ah, right. So equilibrium, 26 damage. Uh it, it just it just shows you the number. So the asterisks mean the number has been modified by something. Right? So if Shara is standing in the front line or is about to stand in the front line, it shows the asterisks to show that the sword of destiny is giving a buff. Uh obviously the equilibrium here. Uh, sorry, whenever you're attacking and you're weakened, like here, liquefying the front line is showing asterisks to show that it's been affected by a modifier. Equilibrium shows asterisks, but to show the modifier is that it is affected by your HP. It does not count the weakness. So you then have to factor that in after the facts. We're dead. Yeah, that was deserved. Oh, that was deserved. We went seven different directions at the very start, got none of them to really come together. Also, not necessarily the character combo that we should have tried to play for that specific uh, challenge. You know, if something is going to deal five damage to you, that is, uh, yeah, that's your yeah, one, wait, hang on. Uh, it's one sixteenth the HP of Sirocco or a quarter of Aurora's, or one-eighth 
of Shara's. Not, you know, honestly, Aurora could probably still deal with it quite fine, but the problem is she then needs someone to be able to stand in front of her and take hits on different ones. Uh, we'll revisit Aurora Shara at some point in the future, but I'm not going to hold myself to trying to do that again next episode because the characters also don't necessarily feel like they fit together extremely well. They definitely feel like the, uh, the least two compatible at the absolute least in my mind. And I have played, I believe, all of the pairings in the game so far. But for the moment, my name has been Rhapsody. Your name has been Jemima. Hopefully you've been enjoying yourselves, Jemima. There is a serious playlist in the top left of the screen as well as a YouTube recommendation directly below. And the names of the generous folks so generously supporting us over on patreon.com slash RhapsodyPlays at or above the $10 tier. Hopefully you've been enjoying yourselves and hopefully we'll see you all next time.